Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ben here, and today I'm coming at you with uh, another video in the five-part series I've been doing about the top current NBA players. And this one's going to be about the top 10 current uh, NBA shooting guards. And I'm just going to discuss who I think are the top 10 guys in the league right now. And um, basically what I like about their games. Um, just a little bit of background about them too. Um, just a little bit about their teams maybe. Just talking about them in general just a little bit. So let's kick it off. Let's get it started. The first guy I have on this list as the as the 10th best shooting guard in the NBA right now is Chris Middleton of the Milwaukee Bucks. He uh, Last year, he averaged 20 points a game, 5 rebounds a game, 4 assists a game, uh, 2 steals a game. He shot 47% from the field and 36% from 3. Um, he had a pretty good year, his highest scoring total by a pretty wide margin, I'd say. Uh, he averaged 18 one other year, but besides that, this is really basically his best year by far um, his career high in rebounds uh, tied for his career high in assists um, the steals is pretty on point with the rest of his career uh, he did shoot pretty well for himself basically his career high like tied with one other year three-point shooting was a little bit low for him at only 36 percent he's normally about 40 percent from the field but uh, you know uh, um, it just makes sense that when you take more shots you're naturally going to miss a few more because you're taking so many more. Uh, he did get a lot more scoring opportunities this last year, so I think that sort of explains why he maybe shot a little bit worse from the three-point land. But overall, a really good player, really promising. Uh, right now, I think he's only around like 26, okay, 27 years old. Um, I I like him a lot. I was highly impressed by him. I think he's he was on my list of most underrated players in the NBA. Uh, if you saw that video, if you haven't and you're interested, go back and check. It's on my channel. Um, but yeah, I, I like him a lot. I think that he's a he's a really good defender, actually, which is not something that not a lot of people know. He's a good perimeter defender. I think the only weakness in his game is that he's basically just a spot-up shooter and he doesn't really create offense for himself. He sort of just like uh, is like a really good 3 and D player. But, like, he's sort of like a very poor man's Clay Thompson, I'd say. Like, you can't just really, like, give him the ball and say, okay, create your own shot. You kind of have to, like, uh, he basically plays off ball almost all the time. But I like him a lot, and I think he's a guy that can still stand to improve more and could be an all-star in a year or two. Uh, number nine on this list, I have a guy who is coming off of one singular season of playing in the NBA, and that is Donovan Mitchell of the Utah Jazz. This last year as a rookie, he averaged 20 points a game, 4 rebounds, 4 assists a game, uh, 1.5 steals a game. He shot 44% from the field and 34% from 3. Uh, in the playoffs, he actually upped a lot of those numbers. He shot 20, he got 24 points a game, 6 rebounds a game, 4 assists a game still. Same amount of steals. He shot about the same percentages. Um, but yeah, Donovan Mitchell as a rookie... No one expected it from him. Everyone expected him to probably be more around 8 to 10 points a game, but getting 20 and being the main scoring option in the Jazz was very surprising and impressive, and I think everyone is glad to um, watch him play and see him develop the way he did. I think uh, it's, a very, it's a very complimentary statement here, but I'm going to say he's sort of got an offense that reminds me a little bit of like just a little bit of like Dwayne Wade in, as far as his athleticism and his dunking ability. Uh, Dwayne Wade, I think, had a lot more like finesse to his game, whereas I feel like Donovan Mitchell is a lot more just like drive to the basket and dunk. Whereas I feel like Dwayne Wade was more nuanced and that he had like a lot of uh, step backs, fadeaways, floaters. I don't think that Donovan Mitchell has as much of that, but I think he just has a lot of pure athleticism like Dwayne Wade had as a young player. And he does have more of a three-point shot, too. But I, th I find them to have a few similarities just in their uh, how they handle the ball and go up and down the court and um, attack the rim. I find a similarity there. Uh, I'm really, you know, this guy, he's so young. I'm really excited to see what he becomes later on in his career. He's only 21. But, like, who knows what he'll be by the time he's 28. I really hope he doesn't follow a career path like uh, Tyreek Evans. I like Tyreek Evans a lot, but uh, Tyreek sort of his problem was that 
when he was a really young player, hit the team he was on, didn't have a lot of offensive weapons, so they basically just gave him the ball all the time and said, like, you score. The offense is yours to kind of do with what you want. And Tyreek always had the ball in his hands, a lot like how Donovan Mitchell had it this last year. And he kind of just got to do whatever he want, wanted. Um, and so that's what I'm scared for with the, uh, Donovan Mitchell. Like, if they don't build around him being the primary option all the time, then I don't think he will succeed as well. Like, let's say they try and acquire a free agent that can score a lot. Like, I don't know. But, you know, there's going to be a ton of free agents this next offseason. If they try and get one that's a big scorer, I feel like he'll become more marginalized. His shooting percentages might go down, which isn't great because, like, 44% from the field and 34% from three, like, isn't great shooting percentages. So, like, he really can't afford to go down in those areas. Um, but, yeah, if he just continues to try and improve his range and his shot and becomes a slightly better defender, uh, he's pretty good now, but I just think he could stand to improve just a little bit like anybody could. Uh, the sky's the limit for him going forward. Now, these next two guys I have essentially as equal, so uh, don't take offense if you find one to be like better than the other because I, I really can't put one ahead of the other. So let's just say that they're tied for uh, seventh instead of like one being eighth and one being seventh. I'll say that they're tied for seventh. But the first guy is uh, Bradley Beal. This last year, he averaged 23 points a game, four rebounds, five assists a game, uh, one steal. He shot 46% from the field, 38% from three. Good percentages. He always shoots good from the field and from three. Late, uh, I'd say like the past couple of years. Um, you know, he's a pretty average defender. He could stand to improve on defense. Um, but really, I don't see a ton of weaknesses in his game. He could stand. He's a pretty decent uh shot creator for himself he can score off the dribble but it, he could just stand to improve because let's say he's like decent at that now but it'd be good to see him move up to sort of like being good at that because if he could be good at that he'd be much more on, uh of a threat on offense he's obviously a huge threat as it stands right now but if he could just um stand to work on his dribble penetration and ISO, not iso scoring but just like shot creation i want to say because ISO scoring has like a negative connotation to it these days, but uh, shot creation is, I guess, what I would say instead of that. But overall, really good player. All right, so the other guy I have tied for seventh is uh, C.J. McCollum of uh, the Portland Trailblazers. This last year, he averaged 21 points a game, a uh, career-high four rebounds a game, three assists a game, one steal a game. Uh, he shot 44% from the field and 40% from three which is pretty good. Um, his All of those numbers are actually slightly down from the year before, except for rebounding, but still, um, you know, very talented player. I, uh, I like almost everything about him. He could stand to improve his defense a little bit. I think a big problem is that he's a really undersized guy, so it's hard to be a great defender on defense when everyone you're facing is like uh, four inches taller than you. But, you know, really like... It, um, it's just what comes with being a small shooting guard, like how Allen Iverson had to deal with it. He always was dealing with way bigger guys. Um, but I like him a lot. You know, he really on offense, he's about as good as I think he's going to get. Um, he can create his own shot a little bit better than Bradley Beal, I'd say. He's a, a little bit better on dribble penetration. Just right now, just like slightly better. But like these two guys are essentially the same player, really, like. They have the same style, like a smaller off guard who shoots really good from three, um, you know, isn't a great ball distributor, like doesn't get a ton of assists, um, not amazing on defense, like really average. Um, yeah, you know, I, I could not differentiate these two and like put one definitively above the other. Uh, they just were so similar to me in their play styles and well, their play styles are slightly different, but I just mean like their their quality of play. Okay, so down to number six on this list is um, Devin Booker of the Phoenix Suns, who is a very young guy. I think he's about 22 years old, if I'm not. Oh, he's only 21, actually. In his third year in the league, he put up 25 points a game, five rebounds, five assists a game, one steal, 43% uh, shooting from the from the field, 38% uh, from three, which are both career highs. Everything was a career high this last year for him. Um you know, if he just keeps improving and 
you know, shot selection is probably the thing. He takes a ton of shots because he's like the last year he's like the only offensively uh, gifted person on the Suns. Almost, you know, you might say T.J. Warren was too, but um, like, like elite offensive talent on the team. So he took a ton of shots. Um, I think that's probably why he shot so low. But he did shoot higher than he has before by 1%, 42% up to 43% this last year. But it'd be really nice to see him get up to around 47%. Uh, his main weakness is that he's really not a good defender. And, um, yeah, like he's just, like, needs to put in more defense on that end of the ball. I think he, en like he enjoys offense a lot, which is good. But I don't think he's, like, really putting the mindset on defense yet. So if he can improve that, that'd be good. Along with that, he's a. Everyone wants to call him the next Kobe. I never see that. I don't think that he is the next Kobe. Um, I think. Oh man, I just he doesn't have the shot creation. Like, like I don't feel that confident giving him the ball and just saying like, okay, create your own shot. Like he does do it. He has step backs and he does drive sometimes. But like, I'm just not super confident just putting the ball in his hands and saying like, okay, go at it. Like, um, like a guy has. Um, like he doesn't have that Kobe thing where he can just take the ball and just do it. Like I feel the offense has to be set up for him a little bit more because he's not a huge distributor as it sits right now. So like you're not really afraid he's gonna pass it out as much when he has the ball. Whereas I feel like Kobe, if he wanted to, could be a really good assist man. So in that way, you had to guard him more in case he was gonna pass. But like Devin Booker, you kind of know if he gets the ball and there's like less than. 12 seconds on the shot clock, he's going to shoot it, I feel like. So if he could learn to uh, distribute more, become a better dribbler, so that his dribble penetration is more of a threat, and actually give some effort on defense, then I think he'd be much more of a threat overall. But he's only 21, he's got plenty of time to improve. Uh, the next guy on this list is a guy I like a lot. Uh, it's Victor Oladipo of the Indiana Pacers, who had a very impressive season this last year. He had career highs almost across the board. He averaged 23 points a game, 5 rebounds, 4 assists, 2 steals, 1 block, 48% from the field, 37% from 3. All of those are career highs. He led the league in steals at 2.4. Uh, all defensive first team. Um, he really upped his shooting numbers, which is good. And he really upped his point total from 16 to 23, which is impressive. And I think he's really coming to his own now, and I think he's a guy that I feel confident in, like, running his own team. Um, honestly, I'd say he's Dwayne Wade now. Like, like this is like a, like, you take the all-time best version of Dwayne Wade, and this is like a slightly worse version. Like, a, kind of like a poor man's Dwayne Wade is what Victor Oladipo is. And poor man's is sort of like a harsh term, because I think that Victor Oladipo like, was an all-star last year, so it's not like he's a like an average player he's like elite defensively and like doesn't but like he's similar to Dwayne Wade in that like his primary thing is like driving to the basket and scoring which is what Dwayne Wade did a lot it didn't shoot a ton from the outside uh neither does Oladipo he has an okay three-point percentage but not like great um he's a little bit better of a shooter honestly but I just like his defensive intensity and driving prowess as far as like getting to the rim are a lot like Wade so I think that they're similar players, and I like him a lot and hope that he continues to improve his play. I think he's only 20, oh, okay, he's 26, so he's kind of entering his prime right now, but I still think he has room to improve and lead that Indiana team to a lot of good years. The next player on this list I have is a guy that played with Dwayne Wade, and that is uh, Jimmy Butler at number four on here. Uh, this last year with Minnesota, he averaged 22 points a game, 5 rebounds, 5 assists, 2 steals, which is very impressive. 47% from the field, career high. 35% uh, from 3, which is pretty good. Um, you know, Jimmy Butler is a great defensive player. I think he's made a defensive team before. Let's see here. Uh, he's been a four-time all-defensive second team, which is impressive. Uh, this, this last year, he was on the all-NBA third team, which is impressive as well. Uh, yeah, he's a really good player. He can he can shoot the ball from outside a little bit. He can shoot off the dribble, create his own shot, drive to the bucket. Can do a little bit of everything. Uh, really good defender. Um, 
Yeah, he's really just a Swiss Army knife and can kind of do whatever you need him to do. You need him to shoot outside shots and be a catch-and-shoot guy. He can do that, I think. You need him to start the offense. I think he could do some of that. You need him to just throw him the ball with five seconds left on the shot clock and just create his own shot. He can do some of that. Uh, I like him a lot. As a Wolves fan, I'm happy to have him. And I hope he continues to perform well and that they can retain him if that's possible. So now the, I think the controversy will start right here at number three because I have a guy ranked um, two guys that I think a lot of people would say are out of order and one should be ranked higher than the other. But uh, this is just how I see them and you can disagree with me and tell me about it in the comments if you desire. But at number three I have Clay Thompson. This last year he, sh he scored 20 points a game. Uh, he had four rebounds a game, two and a half assists a game. He had one steal a game. He shot 49% from the field, which is really good for him. A career high 44% from three, which is really good. The quintessential best version of a 3 and D player you can get. Like a very good defensive player. Um, let's see here. He's a, he actually has never made an all defensive team, but he is like widely known as a very good defensive player. Uh, four time all star. Uh, yeah, he's like every time he, that the Warriors play somebody, he guards the best perimeter player on the team. Um, yeah, like uh, the only weakness in his game is that he does not distribute the ball whatsoever. And he's really like, you can't just give him the ball and have him dribble it. Like he's just a catch and shoot guy all the way. Like don't ask him to create his own shot. He cannot do it. Um, he really can't score like off the dribble. He just has to like get a screen set for him, come around it, catch it open on the wing, shoot it, and score. Uh, that's really the key to his whole game, I'd say. Um, like, yeah, don't just give him the ball at the top of the wing and tell him to score. And the Warriors don't have, need him to do that because they have the uh, Durant and Curry and Livingston off the bench. So they don't need that for him. So it works out perfectly with him uh, on the Warriors team. Great situation for him to be in. The next guy I have on here on as number two is DeMar DeRozan. And now a lot of you might say, Clay Thompson is so much better than DeMar DeRozan. Why do you have him ahead of Thompson? Well, the reason is because, um, honestly, because Clay Thompson has never had his own team and DeRozan has always had his own team. I know it sounds weird. I know you're saying, like, well, who cares if it's his team or the other team? Uh, Thompson wins championships and he's not the main guy. And DeRozan only has ever gotten to the conference finals as a guy and never even the finals. Like, why does it matter whose team it is? And I, like, it's not so much the ownership factor, like, like a pride thing or like a, it's his team or his team, like Shaq and Kobe, like they always fought about whose team it was as if that was like a big thing. It's more about like, we've seen what DeMar DeRozan can do, like essentially on his own as the lead guy. Whereas I feel like Clay Thompson, we haven't seen that and we might not ever see it with him as like the definitive best player on a team, like the offense running through him all the time. He's at like the third option on the Warriors. Now this year with uh, DeMarcus coming in, you could argue he might even become the fourth option on the team potentially, depending on how much DeMarcus gets touches and stuff. Um, DeRozan last year, his stats were 23 points a game, four rebounds, five assists, which is a career high, one steal game, 46% from the field, 31% uh, from three, which is like his main offensive weakness. He is not a great three-point shooter. First career, he shoots 29% from three. 31% is actually his second best year ever from the three-point land, which is impressive. Um, we've seen him with the potential to score profusely. Uh, the year before, in 2017, he averaged 27 points a game and was like third in the league in scoring, which is impressive. Um, so he did go back down to 23. That's because they played their bench a lot more and he didn't get in the game as much. His minutes also dropped by like two minutes a game. Um, and they just had a lot of other guys shooting the ball a lot more. Like everything was just basically running through him the previous year. But this last year in Toronto, they had a much more like everybody gets a shot. Um, like we're not going to just run things through DeMar. We're going to run things through like role players too. So he naturally didn't get as many points a game. He's also a four-time All-Star like Klay Thompson. Uh, he was on the All-NBA second team this last season. The All-NBA third team the year before. I think that him and Klay Thompson are probably pretty similar as far as like talent overall. DeMar DeRozan can create his own shot, score off the dribble, a very good dunker, um, can is like pretty good from the mid-range. 
Um, I feel like he's just that, he's got the skill of like, okay, six seconds left on the shot clock. Just get the ball to the top of the wing. We need a bucket. He can get it for you. Um, whereas Clay Thompson can't do that, so that's why I put him a higher than him. I think he's much more skilled on offense. Clay Thompson, like, just needs to catch it and shoot it and almost catch it. Not open, but, like, he needs to have, like, a good look to catch it and shoot it. <coughs> Excuse me. Clay Thompson is much better on defense, but DeRozan's like an average defender, just slightly above average, so um, I don't think it's enough to put Clay Thompson ahead of him. And at number one, uh, some people might argue he's a point guard now. I'd still argue he's a shooting guard, is James Harden. Uh, this last year, he led the league in scoring and had a personal best in scoring, 30 points a game, um, five rebounds a game, nine assists a game, two steals a game, one block a game, uh, 45% from the field, 37% from three, very good numbers. You know, the year before you might actually argue was a better statistical year. He had 29 points, eight rebounds, and 11 assists a game, which is more impressive. But um, with Chris Paul, naturally, his assists are going to go down. Um, the rebounds went down quite a bit, but I don't know. That might be more of a factor of like Clint Capella just coming into his own and getting a lot more rebounds. That rather than like Harden becoming a worse defender, I don't think that's it's like Harden re, uh, declined as far as his rebounding. I just think it's that he happened to get less because he played on the perimeter more and they had more rebounders this year. Uh, James Harden, you know, I don't know what can you say about him. He's a really good shooter. He uh, can create his own shot. He can distribute. He can kind of do it all on offense. Defense, he's not a great defender. But he went from, like, a bad defender to now he's, like, an average defender to, like, when he gives all his effort on defense, he can be, like, an above-average defender. But, like, just in day-to-day, -day, he's, like, an average defender, like, during a regular season game. Um, but, like, I'd say on offense, he's just about, like, the best player in the game, and that's why he was the MVP this last year. He did play point guard in 2017 for the Rockets, but I think that, like, with Chris Paul on the team now, I'd argue that he basically went back to shooting guard. He, there are still lots of stretches where he, uh, Chris Paul will be on the bench and then James Harden takes over at point guard. But like when they got all the right guys in the game healthy, he's basically playing shooting guard and Chris Paul is playing point guard. Um, like, yeah, that's just how I see it. I, uh, you could argue that he's the backup point guard for the team because he takes over and Chris Paul's out of the game. But like he spends the majority of his time at shooting guard these days, I'd say. And they take time like... Okay, this possession you take the ball up, this possession I take the ball up. But in general, I'd say that James Harden is the shooting guard of the team. So that's why I'm putting him in this category. And plus, the point guard category, as you'll see coming up, is a very crowded category. So I want to put him here. So that's a bit of overview, guys. I hope you found that entertaining. Uh, if you have any disagreements or thoughts, let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to hear about them. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.